People had told me about Myanmar, but nothing could have prepared me for this experience. It was simply wonderful. It is the best trip I've taken anywhere. This video starts off on a pleasant note, but you can't really talk about Myanmar without mentioning the elephant in the room. Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, is a magical land of tradition, stoic sagacity and the most charming people of more than 100 different ethnic origins. Thousands of exquisite sacred stupas and temples decorate the mysterious landscape of rivers and forests filled round plains. Now is the time to capture this well-kept secret, as only a few years ago Myanmar was completely frozen in time and untouched by westernized development. Precious traditions and unique customs have thus been cherished until now. However, with increased exposure to the western world, one can already sense a slight modernization and change in the bigger cities. Now is the time to feel and capture this immeasurable culture and society bound to change and develop quickly. An opportunity otherwise missed forever. Before we go any further, please subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of the awesome stuff I'm posting here every week. You know, sometimes tourism can actually just drive me crazy. Which is kind of a paradox because, well, tourism is a big part of my life. It's not that, it's not that I don't like tourists, but sometimes they strip away the local identity, the very thing they're there to experience. Best places to visit are the ones that hasn't changed, but there are not too many of them left. Besides of being a beautiful country, rich of culture and tradition, it is the people of Myanmar I fell in love with. They're really next to take part in my project to create beautiful photos was just unbelievable. Not only did they want to take part, but they also helped me in any way possible. Shy, curious, always trying to communicate with you in their not so good English, generous, and beautiful people. I sometimes hear photographers say, you know, there is nothing left to shoot there. It's been done. You know, the, uh, the balloons over Bagan, the fishermen of, on, on Lake Inlay, the, uh, the novice monk in the temple. But if that's your opinion, why go anywhere? Why do anything? It's been done, everything it has been done. There's nothing new under the sun, you know, from the North Pole to the Great Wall of China. It's been done, it's been shot, you know. I see it on Google, you see it on Google, but have you experienced it? You see, there's a huge difference between being fed something on Google or Facebook than actually experience it for yourself. You know, it's not just about shooting the fishermen on Lake Inlay or the novice monk. It's about interaction, talking to them, sharing, getting to know people with completely different backgrounds, understanding what they're all about, learn, grow. And if you're respectful, some of them might even invite you to their home, share food and drink with you and tell you their story. You see, it's not just about the photos. It's about the experience. And the typical novice monk photos are wonderful. They are posed. It's not by any mean a documentation of anything. We're there to take beautiful photos. And if nothing else, they are extremely beautiful. The typical shots are only a small portion of what we do there, but there's no reason to skip them. We visit places not many tourists go to. We visit amazing markets full of life, colors and diversity. We visit tribes where time has basically stood still. It's, you know, it's endless. And if nothing else, just being there, seeing it, experiencing it. If you enjoy new experiences, you know, 
uh, different culture, exotic places, wonderful people. Myanmar is definitely something for you. But if your idea of traveling is sex, drugs and rock and roll, please go somewhere else. Like I said, it's difficult to talk about Myanmar without mentioning the elephant in the room, namely the Rohingya people. Let me start by saying, traveling to Myanmar is not dangerous. This conflict was at the border of Myanmar and Bangladesh, and the rest of the country is and always was completely safe. As a matter of fact, it's one of the safest countries I've been to. Nowhere, well, except maybe for Iceland. I'm comfortable leaving all my camera gear in the car, you know, walking alone among the poorest of the poor pose no threat to me and even my clients you know for example a small lady with thousands of dollars worth of, of equipment camera gear had nothing to worry about but don't try stuff with the Myanmar police and whatever you do do not piss off the army that's gonna end badly for you but back to the elephant if all you know about the current conflict is from Western media, chances are it's not a lot. It's not my intention to be political or take sides, but here is a little piece of history. There are some links about this in the description. I urge you to do your own research. Western media is a business and their main concern is the bottom line. A far second, maybe the news. And me? I'm just a photographer with internet access, so do your own research. Myanmar is the poorest country in Southeast Asia, but Myanmar is a country rich in oil, natural gas, jade, gems and other minerals, so historically they had a lot to trade with. But along came the British Empire and they wanted to trade. But the Burmese people did not care to do any business with them or anyone else in Europe for that matter. So of course, instead of trade, the British just invaded and colonized Burma. And it remained a British colony from 1824 to 1948. In some ways, those years were good in Burma. They built railroads, education system improved and businesses thrived. However, the English dragged the Burmese people through three wars, took the country by force and stole the natural resources. No railroads or other stuff can rectify that. But to make a long, complicated story simple and short, eventually the British left, but they also left a lot of problems. There was no real government to take over when they left, so in 1962 the military took control over Burma and remained in power until 2011. They took over all natural resources from the British and the Burmese people got none of the benefits. One of the problems left by the English is the situation with the Rohingya Muslims, which is far from simple and Western media are not giving an accurate perspective on the situation. Colonial policies encourage migrant labor in order to increase rice cultivation and profits. And for that reason, a lot of immigrants from Bangladesh came to Myanmar. The British promised the Rohingya people separate land, a Muslim national area, in exchange for their support. During the Second World War, the Rohingya sided with the British while Myanmar nationalists supported the Japanese. Following the war, the British rewarded the Rohingya with prestigious government posts. However, they were not given an autonomous state as promised by the British. And when the British left, they just left the Rohingya people with their broken promises. And since they had been working against the interest of the people of Burma, even trying to impose Sharia law, the Burmese people did not care for them and basically they just wanted them to go back to Bangladesh. Which was not that simple because some of them had been there for three generations. The current humanitarian catastrophe ostensibly began with an assault on a police post by the Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army. 
a new insurgency group. And that caused the Burmese army to retaliate. And their mission kicked them out once and for all. And the consequence of that is somewhat known and it is horrible. The Rohingya were not some innocent bystanders in the beginning of this conflict. But having said that, no people should have to endure the crude and disgusting force of any army. And the overwhelming majority of the Burmese people did not support this violence, even if they wanted nothing to do with the Rohingya people. Don't judge a whole nation by the deeds of a corrupt army. Don't believe everything you hear from Western media. Do your own research. Make your own decisions. The Burmese army did the people of Burma no favors. Still today they control everything. The government of Myanmar has actually done a lot to open the country to the outside world, but the real power is all within the army. They decide who and when to attack. They control and own every natural resources which makes them rich beyond imagine. And someone who has that kind of money and power is not just going to give it away. Once a year, in December, I lead a photo tour to Myanmar. You don't have to be an advanced photographer to join. It's a workshop, so we will teach you everything you need to know to get the pictures you want. It's a small group of eight photographers with two top-level photo guides, one of which is a local, absolutely one of the best guys I had ever worked with. This tour is the best I got, and I can promise you it's going to be the trip of a lifetime. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. But like I said, I'm a photographer with an internet access, so do your own research. Myanmar is completely safe, and the people there are wonderful. Ask anybody who's been there. Thank you, and good luck.